FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome, and you are listening to the Financial Survival Network. It's January 16th, 2018. Well, the scandals, sexual harassment issues continue on unabated. Where will it end? A great question. Well, right now we've got some issues coming up with the Oscars, but I'll let James Herson tell you all about it. As you know, James is a best-selling author, international business attorney, news analyst, and cultural commentator, as well as social media scholar. And hey, before we start, be part of the show. Email us at kl at kerrylutz.com. We've got a white paper you can get for free on cryptocurrencies and emerging cashless society. But uh, in the meantime, James, welcome back. Hey, great to be with you. Yeah, I guess, um, you know, the center, the epicenter of the sexual impropriety scandal was in Hollywood, of course, which began with uh, Harvey Weinstein. I wish they got into cryptocurrency <laughs> instead. But, uh, but, but the thing is, Hollywood is trying desperately to deal with its tarnished brand. And it's been tarnished on many fronts. When you think about, uh, it's very similar to the NFL. Hollywood um, box office for the movie business is at record lows. It's been falling for 15 years and it fell precipitously. The size of the audience is shrinking for movies and uh, the public, um, when, when the public is exposed to sanctimonious, condescending preaching at these award shows, they, they turn them off. And so the ratings for the award shows are going down. And Hollywood's response, of course, is superficial as it was with the Golden Globes. They had the female participants on the red carpet and during the ceremonies dress in black. Mm -hmm. And so the men dressed in black, too, which is, you know, no big deal. It's a black tie event. Yeah. But and this is about the hashtag Me Too movement. And so it's dominating in themes uh, that are happening in all of these award shows. But yet Hollywood is so utterly blind when it comes to their customers values. For example, they set up a commission um, following the lead of politics. It's sort of a sexual harassment commission. It has a long name uh, to avoid sexual harassment and to advance women in the workplace. And as the leader, the sexual harassment czar of the entertainment industry, they chose Anita Hill. <laughs> Anita Hill, who is known by a very large segment of the public as a liar who came out to thwart the nomination of the now Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. Now, how could you be so utterly stupid as to pick someone that's going to insult a significant, significant part of your customer base? But that's what they do. And so now uh, they, they have the, the big kahuna of award shows, the Oscars coming up, and they their host is going to be Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel, the, who cre co-created The Man Show and went out on the street and had women that he encountered on the street guess what was in his pants right. as a stunt sketch. And mm -hmm. it's all over YouTube and similar things. I mean, that was a show that had women jumping on trampolines wearing bikinis. This is um, a supposed to be a sensitive community that's focused on women and they get Jimmy Kimmel. So here's their other problem is as the award season proceeds, one of the critical favorites who's already won a Golden Globe and a Critics Award is James Franco. But the problem for the Academy that awards the Oscars is that Franco has sexual impropriety allegations against him from five women, including... Is that well, I all? Think, uh, <laughs> Just five? You know, him going only, at, only five? Only five, James? So far. <laughs> <laughs> and counting. Five so, and counting. So the LA Times did an investigation of James Franco. And so Franco shows up at the Golden Globes wearing a pin. You remember they used to wear these mm -hmm. pins 
that would support various pet causes of the left. And the, the pin had on it Time's Up, another kind of hashtag, Time's Up, which is an initiative that was formed in Hollywood by 300 women in the entertainment business. And the big thing it's doing is setting up a legal fund so that women can hire lawyers and pursue sexual harassment claims, which is fine. But after he did that, these women came out on the social media and and said, how can you know this guy be a part of the Golden Globes? And one of them was Ali Sheedy. I don't know if you remember. She was part of yeah. what they called the Brat Pack. The Brat Pack, yeah, sure. Which was the the Rat Pack, and it was a, it started, I think, with that movie, The Breakfast Club. Oh, and yeah. Ali Sheedy wrote, "James Franco just won. Please never ask me why I left the film TV business." <laughs> and then she erased yeah. that tweet. Uh. And so he's been asked about it because he was um, in an off-Broadway play. He was actually the director where she was uh, in the play. And so so he's had professional contact with her. But in any case, the all these different awards groups, um, and I'm a member of a couple of them. I'm, um, I, I'm a member of SAG-AFTRA, and I'm a member of um, the TV Academy. But they're all voting right now. And I remember the Grammy Academy, too. Well, and so Franco's not looking at any words from me, um, from Neris, from the Grammy people. <laughs> but he's because the critics love him because he's got momentum. Yeah. He's very likely to get an Oscar nomination. Now, he's up against some stiff competition. You know, Gary Oldman played Churchill in The Darkest right. Hour. Uh, Denzel Washington. There's some favorites, some politically correct favorites. Daniel Day Lewis is even there, and he was, um, you know, I, I think he was going to retire and leave the business, but he's not. Probably going to get a nomination. And so, if he, get, if Franco, what if Franco won? Oh my goodness! And you know, but last year, Casey Affleck, the brother of Ben Affleck, did win. And he had two sexual harassment suits that he settled out of court. But that was before, you know, the Harvey Weinstein story broke, before all this mm -hmm. altered Hollywood. I mean, it was that same ceremony where Meryl Streep went up and said that Harvey Weinstein was her god. Yeah. You know, which, uh, <laughs> which I don't know how she recovers from that. But in Hollywood, I guess contradictions are OK. Well, what about uh, Oprah? OK, uh, being the voice, the conscience of Hollywood all of a sudden. And then we go back and there's a picture of her with Harvey Weinstein and Rita Orr, where she almost looks like she's pushing him, pushing Rita Orr, giving her away to Harvey. I mean, talk about contradictions here, James. Oh, absolutely. Well, as soon as Oprah was touted as a presidential candidate after the Golden Globes and, she, and her speech was praised, which, by the way, was just a cliche ridden feminist diatribe. It was not an original thought in that speech. But in any case, all of a sudden, the, the Internet erupted with all these pictures. I think there may be, you know, close to 10 of them with Oprah in various stages of affection with Harvey Weinstein, uh, either with her arm around him, kissing him, kissing his ear. holding him, <laughs> hugging him. <laughs> oh. And then, but that one with Rita Ora, it, it does look like he, he, she's matchmaking or something. And that's what she's been accused of, that she was not just one of these people in Hollywood who knew that Harvey Weinstein was a predator and kept silent which is every single person who worked closely with either Miramax or the Weinstein Company, which includes a lot of big people um, who've admitted it, and uh, including Quentin Tarantino, Jane Fonda. There's a whole bunch of them who admitted publicly. Yeah, we knew. Um, but this is different. Oprah seems to be an, a, an active, intentional enabler. Participant. And that's what she looks like she's doing with Rita Ora. But I don't know for a fact, but that's rumored and it's being being alleged by people, including victims. So yeah. my prediction is Oprah doesn't run, which is the same prediction as our president has made, <laughs> because I don't think that carefully cultivated brand of hers um, that she would want to risk having it extremely damaged by and especially not just by the media or by the Republican Party, but by the 
Democrat Party, because when you go into a Democrat primary, mm. the viciousness knows no bounds. And if Elizabeth Warren, Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, Andrew Cuomo, and their opposition research people and Fusion GPS go up against Oprah, she will come out a different person. She will never be the same in terms of her public image. And I don't think she wants to risk that. Yeah, she's going to go in there as a pig and come out a sausage, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly. We don't want to see the sausage being made because we see it right now. Ugh. Bradley Manning has announced a run for Senate. Bradley slash Chelsea Manning. Right. And of course, people are reacting to the fact that you know, this was someone that that harmed international intelligence and that had taxpayers pay for surgery to uh, to, and, you know, basically become another gender and all this other stuff. But the real viciousness against this person is coming from the Cardin campaign, the incumbent establishment Democrat. And uh, Glenn Greenwald has written about it. I mean, it's. <laughs> it's yeah. so you can't make it up. It's just an over the top, you know. You just so can't make it up. <laughs> I, maybe Oprah's watching. Yeah. Well, if she has any sense, she'll stay out of it uh, <laughs> because God only knows what's out there. Uh, her public persona is so carefully cultivated, and her private persona is is airtight, locked up. And you know those pictures with uh, Harvey kind of say it all. And I mean. Looking at these pictures of Harvey Weinstein with his uh, alleged victims, well, they're probably not alleged at this point. And you just see that so many of these uh, female actresses, young aspiring ones, look like uh, deer caught in headlights. You know, it's it's shocking. Well, it truly is. And it's more than really, you know, people say, well, that was always part of Hollywood. Well, they had the casting couch, which Marilyn Monroe talked about, Elizabeth Taylor talked about. So it was there, of course, it's human nature. But what we're talking about with Harvey and with Kevin Spacey, uh -huh. and with these other allegations are allegations of criminality, because it's really one human being assaulting another. And that's different. And that hasn't been part of Hollywood. But I would say that the same community that mainstreams pornography, that celebrates Fifty Shades of Grey, that pushes, pushes the hookup culture in their sitcoms, that promotes a hip-hop music culture that refers to women as garden utensils and female dogs, that that community should not be shocked when men in power <laughs> act out the very values that they're promoting. Oh, for sure. And look, uh, it was on South Park years ago. And same with Kevin Spacey, that uh, they had a guy running out of uh, running across the set. And they said, oh, he just escaped from Kevin Spacey's basement from his uh, from his torture <laughs> chamber, <laughs> his dungeon. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Seth, Seth MacFarlane made a joke about Harvey, too. And that, yeah, it's that's that's and I don't know if that was prophetic or it was inside information. I don't know, but it sure seems like they knew. Oh my goodness! Yeah, you you just can't make this stuff up, James. So. That's Oliver's. Yeah, that means South Park. One of the producer creators is Oliver Stone's kid, mm -hmm. so he probably knows where all the bones are buried. Yeah, and he's uh, intent on digging some up. Uh, well. Everybody's digging them up now, and it's just going to be interesting to see how many people fall, both in Hollywood and in Washington. We're not at the end of it. We're not at the end of the disclosures. More is coming. It looks like uh, this has always looked to me, James, and I'm conspiracy theorizing here, speculating. This has been an orchestrated uh, rollout, if you will. Just, you know, it gets going, then it calms down a bit, then there's even more explosive revelations, and then, you know, again. Oh. It, I think it is because it's it, the Democratic Party and the left perceive this as a weapon they can use, particularly against President Trump, but against other people. But it has backfired on them because, <laughs> Big you know, more often, yeah, more often than not, it's um, liberal men who are supposed to be champions of women who are getting caught in the very trap that was set um 
you know, by the left. It's it, it's a fascinating thing. It's biblical. Yeah, totally shot themselves in the foot and uh, wound up boomeranging. And now they're going to have to deal with it and couldn't happen to a nicer group of people, in my opinion. Anyway, James, where's the best place to find your work, your latest writings? Yeah, it's uh, at my website, James Herson, H-I-R-S-E-N dot com. And I'm all over the social media uh, at the Jim Jams on uh, Twitter and uh, James Herson on Facebook. Hey, well, we appreciate you coming on, James. And uh, yeah, your, your comments about Hollywood's decline spot on. How many more Star Wars movies do we really need as a society? But that's about the only thing they can pump out because otherwise their agenda winds up tarring and tainting their work. And then instantly you upset 50, 60 percent of the public who says, the heck with you. I'll just stay home and not watch the NFL. And I don't need to go to a movie theater, especially now that I can buy a 75 inch flat screen for a couple of grand and I'll just stay home and I'll watch YouTube videos uh, of Mark Dice or uh, Alex Jones. <laughs> <laughs> right. Maybe, yeah, maybe that, or you know, or stream some stuff, some uh, movies, uh, classic yeah. movies. They're so, all over YouTube now. Yeah, classic movies before politics became synonymous with Hollywood and Hollywood. You know, I, I know you got to go, but just one further comment: these are not deep thinkers we're dealing with. Uh, they don't. No. It's not like they're working for National Review or even Huffington Post. These guys, a lot of them. Uh, you know, didn't go to college. No big deal there. Barely got out of high school. They're idiot savants. They can do one thing well, and that's act. And that's all they should do if they have any yeah. sense and self-preservation. Anyway, uh, find out more. Hey, send us your emails. Be part of the show. KL at KerryLutz.com. The Twitter feeds at Kerry Lutz. Facebook page, Financial Survival Network. James, it's always great to have you on. Keep up the great work. All right. You too, Kerry. Thanks for having me. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.